Hello everyone, my name is Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, welcome to the channel and welcome to week one of the April Slayer games. I want to keep this part short so we can just get into the rest of the video today, but to summarize how the intended first week of the competition went, it did not go well. And the two major reasons for that being I didn't do enough planning to see that the hunting grounds rules might cause an issue. And the other main reason is that I did not tell the moderation team exactly what I was going to be doing because I wanted it to be a surprise. And they just assumed that I was going to be speedrunning things and trying to get you guys speedrun off of that and not telling you guys to speedrun things for money. And what it came down to was I told you guys you had one week to speedrun Lesser Embermane for $50. But with all of the rule changes and the confusion, it ended up becoming you have one day to speedrun a Lesser Embermane for $50. And because of that, I've decided that we will be pulling this first week from the competition, we'll be adding a new week onto the end of the competition, and we'll be starting from scratch as if this is the first week of the competition. And because of the headache that this rule situation caused, I not only gave the potential winner, but everyone who participated in this week some codes for in-game items. But yeah, we'll be starting from scratch, we're definitely more prepared for this week than we were for last week, and I'm excited to see what you guys will pull off this week. And with Radiant Season just around the corner, I figured it would make a little bit of sense at least to do some Umbral Escalation speedruns for this week. And the rules are pretty simple. Complete a 10 to 50 escalation as fast as possible. The timer starts when you press ready. The timer ends when the end hunt screen appears. You are not allowed to use any bugs or glitches. Read and follow all of the game rules. It's only for solos this week and it must be a 10 to 50 escalation. All right, guys, and here we go. I have a benchmark sort of run for you guys to take a gander at. So we are going to accidentally start the timer before I press ready. And then we are going to start the timer once I press ready here. Um, so I use the Malkarian barrel repeaters uh, with marksman chamber on this one. Um, I felt like the Malkarian barrel with the teleport with the extra walking that you save uh, had a bit, little bit more value than using the Radiant Barrel, but this run specifically probably wasn't the case for that because uh, here I start off with a Shadow Touch Koshai, which we are going to absolutely demolish in the first uh, little section here. Let's take a look. And if you're counting, that's 15 shots that it took to kill that. Um... <clears throat> You know, uh, Pangar Prism, Marksman Chamber is very good for these sort of speed kills. Um, and then here I take Executioner. Uh, but Shadow Dodge w was an option. I was kind of kicking myself for taking, for not taking Shadow Dodge because that is a interrupt method that you can add to repeaters. And that would have just made, that, that would have made a bit of a difference throughout this run, I would say. But like right here, I get a dodge through on this Nezaga interrupt, which that would have been an interrupt had I taken shadow dodge. If I was able to get a charge of shadow dodge from the amount of shooting that I did on the Drask beforehand. So you can see the Drask is already below a quarter HP. Uh, that's kind of the power of the Markman Chamber. Um, once you break the part that you're shooting that the Mark is on, that will now have an 80% damage bonus to your actual damage. Uh, if the part isn't broken, it will only do it to the part damage. Uh, so it'll only go towards breaking that part. But once you break it, it is certainly a massive damage bonus. And you can see here, we have killed them both before the two minute mark. Looking pretty good, look pretty solid, very solid pace. And then here I get Thrill of the Hunt, which is, you know, pretty good. Ideally, you would have uh, Thrill of the Hunt first round. And then um, I could have taken Executioner on the second round. But, you know, that's um, there, there's also kind of the case where, you know, you have Executioner that is active for the entirety of the, um, of the first fight where Thrill of the Hunt wouldn't be active for the entirety of the first fight. So there's those sort of amp decisions that you'll have to make too, um, or the lack of amp decisions. I wouldn't be surprised if the top run is just going to immediately just press space bar or, or uh, you know, their interacting or their interaction key, whichever that is, to immediately take the first amp that pops up. 
uh, because that's faster than just deciding what amp you want to take. So we'll see what the top strategy is going to be. See here, I take full throttle. Um, so the intention here was to uh, sort of split my focus with the full throttle. Um, you know, I could focus one behemoth where... And then once I get that down to a quarter HP, I'll focus the other behemoth, and I still have all of that crit chance. You can see I absolutely start critting um, like crazy on here, as uh, as that extra 30% crit chance would make you do. I think there I even missed the um, the uh, this captain's grip buff because I threw it into Quill Shot. But you see here, Shrike is absolutely bullying me. And, um, this is the weirdest Pangar ball mark I've ever had. Uh, I definitely shot that leg several times, and, uh, it decides to go on the tail. You know, it makes sense. And then right here, I'm going to get bodied by Shrike again, but I'm going to call BS on this one. I don't think that should have hit me. <laughs> I'm just going to be real with you. And I took a pause there, just because I was like, that actually hit me, man? Like, seriously? Um, let me see here. Shrike doing a series of interrupts. I have no interrupt method. That shadow dodge would have come in really handy here. Uh, but unfortunately, I do not have that at my disposal. And Shrike continues to body me. But this just goes to show you that there's a lot of improvements that could be made to, you know, the Umbral Escalation category at least. And Shrike continues to body me. I swear, um... I swear I didn't have iframes. All right, uh, that's going to be my uh, my statement there. Um, iframes just disappeared. I even die. I even die here um, because I was taking my tonics, which I wasn't sure if I wanted to take the tonics or not. But I was just like, I'm just going to get this over with. So we kill a strike, and we move on to Thrax, our final round of the Umbral Escalation. And we are going to take, I believe, Overclock. No, we get uh, Umbral Form. Maybe I'm thinking of a different run. But we get Elemental Form Umbral. So an extra 50% damage on a Lantern Hold there. Uh, so not a bad choice. I think that was that was definitely the best choice that I had out of those. Um, no, ideally, last round, you could get uh, Overclock or Full Throttle. You can get multiple Overclocks and Full Throttles in the same Escalation. You see, I actually get the Interrupt here like a pro gamer would. Um, unfortunately, I don't get a Stagger out of the uh, out of the uh, Pangar Ball. If I perhaps crit enough on that, I would have gotten that Stagger. But I don't believe... I I'd only had the 9% passive crit chance. I didn't run Cunning on this, so I had Discipline plus that 9%. Plus the 2% from the Slayer's Path or so. So, not enough crits. Uh, you see, I, I want to say, you know, that was, that was some nice tracking. I wasn't able to hit a part specifically, but... And there we go. Thrax is dead. I, uh, I stopped my timer early here. But I retimed it. This would be a 644. So even with a death, even with how much Shrike bodied me in the um, in the fourth round, this would be the top. This would be the top time on the Umbral Escalation leaderboard. Uh, so you guys can definitely improve that. I am looking forward to see who is going to take home the prize from this week. And once again, I apologize for uh, what happened in week one. We're def like I said, we're definitely more prepared for it this week. I definitely did a bit more planning to make sure that the rest of the weeks are going to go more smoothly. I'm communicating everything with the moderation team as well. And, um, you know, hopefully there will be no more hiccups going forward in the competition. But thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like on the video. Let me know if you guys like more of these commentary over gameplay type videos. 
Um, maybe I'll try to do some more like that. Uh, maybe even for my trial runs as well. And if you guys enjoy Dauntless, consider subscribing to the channel. Here I post Dauntless content every week. And a reminder, if I hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of this event, any of the cash prizes that I'm going to be giving out are going to be doubled. And to stay up to date with anything relating to the April Slayer games, my content here on YouTube and on Twitch, as well as any giveaways I will be doing, join the Discord server in the description. I will manually make a post whenever I do anything content or giveaway related. Related. And I'm definitely available for any questions you guys might have about the April Slayer games and how you guys could get yourself some cash prizes as well as some hunt passes from this competition. But I have been Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, and I will catch you guys next time.